Hello, 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 hello. It's so good to see you today. I am coming to you straight from my closet. <laughs> okay. I am in Georgia at Jason's house. Uh, fun fact, I don't live with my husband because that seems like way too much together time. But I was with him this weekend, so I'm still with him this week. I think I might even stay with him next weekend. That's going to be like 10 days with my husband in a row. I don't know how you people stay like living together with your husband. I think living together is what causes divorces. I don't really know. That hasn't been proven as a fact, but I do know that if you don't live with your husband, you love him and you enjoy being with him when you're with him for 10 days at a time. So this whole living together thing is baloney, if you ask me. But anyway, I have an office here in Georgia. I used to shoot all my videos up in that office. They built it for me. In fact, when I first moved in with my husband, after we've been married for 15 months, we were married for 15 months before we ever moved in together. They were building me that office over there uh, on top of that garage. And I actually worked from the closet for about four months. So I did a ton of podcast interviews in this closet. I still have a desk in the closet. I'll show you. You want to see my desk? Uh oh. Okay. Here's my desk. Okay. I am still very much set up to work in the closet. I, I used to do sales calls in here. I used to do all my coaching in here. Uh, some of the girls that were with me before First Still Done Fast, they will remember me doing interviews and videos from the closet. And frankly, this closet has the best acoustics of any place I work. Coming to you live from the closet. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. The answers are still the same. <laughs> oh, one of my favorite videos from working in the closet. I was out doing a little bit of driving for dreams one day. And I saw this guy in a pickup truck in front of me. And I could see he had a dog in there. And it was a small dog. Often referred to as a sausage dog, and I am a nut for the little German dogs. I love them. I rolled down my window, and I did this whole video on this from this closet. It's my favorite video that I did in the closet. I'll have to replay that video. I rolled my window down, though, and I don't know this dude. He's in this big old pickup truck with Alabama plates on it. And I just rolled down the window, and I hollered at him. I said, let me see your wiener. <laughs> I didn't think a thing about it. I didn't think about what it was going to sound like. I didn't think about what he might say or do or what he might show me. Y'all, <laughs> I almost died. It was out of my mouth before I thought about what I was going to say. But you know what he did? He grabbed that little dog and put him up in the window. He knew exactly what I was saying and that I wasn't hitting on him. <laughs> oh, man. It was so funny. Let me see your wiener. <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. I am such a mess. And now I've told that story like 16,000 times. So everybody knows it. Anyway, y'all got questions and I got answers more than just while I'm in the closet and about a dog that nobody else has even seen. <laughs> My friend Lanise put this picture up the other day. It was a meme and it was like how other people tell stories. There's a beginning and an end, but how I tell stories. <laughs> and sometimes that's how I feel when I answer your questions. It's like you have one clear cut question that I could easily answer with maybe even yes or no. And I could probably answer it in like 60 seconds, but instead I make a 45 minute video fully answering your question and maybe not completely answering your question, but we get to hang out for a while. 
<laughs> so the other part of her picture was how I tell a story. I start the story, I go back, I tell you the beginning story, I f shoot forward, we come back, I go on a different rampage, and then finally we end up at the end of the story. That's just me. <laughs> and if you want to hang out and nerd out about real estate investing and hear lots of good stories, get a ticket, get a VIP ticket to She Buys It Live. Go to, let's see, shebuysit.com slash live. Shebuysit.com slash live. Go get your VIP tickets. Yay! And now I'm really going to answer your questions. So Sharon says, I got my first call back from an out-of-state seller on a free and clear mobile home. Any tips on mobile homes before I make my three offers? First of all, yay! you're sending out yellow letters and yay you're getting the phone to ring so woo! super exciting that's good good stuff so first of all let's just be excited for that now the second part of your question is it's a mobile home and Stacy popped in and she says is it in a park or on land and Sharon said that it's in a park and Stacy said well if it's in a park you're basically buying it like a vehicle and that's true so if you are just buying the box, you're just buying the trailer, you're just buying the mobile home, those things are actually registered at the DMV's office because they come in on wheels. So you get a title to that trailer just like you would get a title to your car. And I know it's confusing because in real estate we go to a title company to close. It's a totally different kind of title process. A lot of the words in real estate like closing and title they're confusing because in the English language we have lots of words that mean different things in different contexts like live and live, read and read. It's kind of the same thing with title and closing. All right. So if you're getting title on a mobile home, you do that at the DMV. If you're getting title on a house, if you're getting the title to the dirt, you go to a title company or you go to an attorney. It's weird. It's the same word. It's a title, but it's totally different. Now, if you're getting the whole title to the whole park, that's a totally different situation that we talk about in apartment blitz, which is different than first sale done fast. So if we're talking about just buying a mobile home, I have lots of questions and we kind of talked about mobile homes this morning on the dealmakers club. So, if the mobile home is attached to the land and the land is also going to transfer, that's one kind of situation. I have a trailer and it's attached to the dirt and I got a deed for the trailer and the dirt and I did it on a lease option. If there's a trailer and it's in a park, then you don't own the dirt and I'm not buying a trailer. If it's not attached to the dirt so I have questions if it's in a park Stacy's absolutely right you go to the DMV you transfer title and in fact Renee Cabrera is in this group and he is amazing he buys and flips mobile homes while they're in the park and he is brilliant at that I don't do that I have one trailer and it's attached to the dirt and I got the deed. So it's more like a regular real estate transaction, not just buying a mobile home. Uh, Heather Vires has a lot of experience with mobile homes and foreclosures of mobile homes and re repos of mobile homes and buying mobile home parks and all that kind of stuff. So Sharon, I have questions. Is this mobile home attached to dirt and you can get a deed because then, okay. And Kendra Ellis is also an expert at buying single mobile homes attached to the dirt. I've only done one. Heather Vires does parks. Kendra does singles when we're talking about mobile homes. So check in with both those two ladies. They may be able to help you with that also. I have one trailer and I don't want it. All right, so I'm not buying any more trailers. 
And if you want to, you can, they just don't resell as well. And I've learned that through my experience, not just going on what somebody said, did, or told me. I'm telling you, in my experience, it was, it's been a lot harder to sell that trailer than it's been to sell any of my houses. Okay, so I have more questions, Sharon. Tell me more about it. Or maybe that helped. Did that help? Do it, yes or no? You also, if you're looking for like the value of a mobile home, you can look those up on NADA. I don't remember what that stands for, but NADA dot com it's the same site it's the main big national whatever that tells you what a car is worth what a truck is worth it also tells you what a trailer is worth based on its VIN number just like it was a car all right so check the NADA if you're gonna get comps on a trailer all right Christy says what is the best daily habit for a wholesaler I have a title company and I'm working on building a buyer's list. Thanks for all you do. I love watching your videos. Oh, Christy, thank you so much. I am so glad you love watching these videos. Yay! Okay, so you've got some of your ducks in a row. You've got your title company and you're building your buyer's list. That's cool. A lot of people, a lot of coaches, a lot of gurus will tell you that they won't actually talk to you until you have a buyer's list. So I understand that other people feel like that's important, but like I told Sheila when she got started with me, Sheila Britt is in the mastermind and she went through somebody else's program before she found me. And that happens all the time. Luella did the same thing. She went through somebody's program and then she found me. So it happens all the time. Now what I hear from these other people, because the way I learned it, a buyer's list wasn't first, but I understand other people preach a buyer's list. Cool, fine, do it to it, baby, whatever makes you happy. But I focus on the sellers. So I think you have an awesome question here as what kind of daily habit do I need to be a wholesaler? And I teach in First Sale and Fast, and we just started FDDF Plus today. I'm super excited. It's the one-on-one -on -one and group coaching aspect of First Deal Done Fast. But what I teach, what I preach, what I try to hammer in on all the girls is that every Friday I want them to send me five of our green seller lead sheets. All right. I want five seller lead sheets every single Friday while they're with me for eight weeks in FDDF Plus. I want them to fill out, complete, and submit five seller lead sheets. Now, there's some math behind the magic here, all right? I know that if they have five seller lead sheets every single week and they're making three offers, like I teach them how to do on each of the five, that's 15 offers, 15 offers, 15 offers, whichever way it is, I don't know, backwards in the camera. That means they're making 15 offers every single week. And five is one seller a day so they're talking to one seller a day and they're making three offers a day which means by the end of the month 15 30 45 60 they've made 60 offers by the end of the month that's two offers a day in a 30-day month and they do that for two months, eight weeks while they're with me in FDDF Plus. That's 120 offers in eight weeks. That's four offers a day, pretty much. So if you need a daily habit to be a successful wholesaler, if you need a daily habit to be a successful lady landlord, if you need a daily habit, I think your daily habit should be filling out the seller lead sheet and making offers. You can do anything that you want to do in all of your time. You can build the best buyers list in the world. But if you don't focus on sellers and sellers problems, you won't need the buyers list. 
And, you know, using that math, if you make 120 offers in eight weeks, it is mathematically impossible that you did not get one contract signed. And that's my goal. I want every wholesaler, I want every lady landlord, I want every lease option lady out there, I want you to realize that you don't have to do it like the dudes. You don't. You don't have to go out there and kill it. You don't have to go out there and gut it. You don't have to go out there and use other mean sounding words and feel like you are attacking some sort of prey. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a little more feminine and flirty than that. All right. I went hunting with Jason one time and I took snacks. I took crackers. Apparently that's not what you want to take hunting. I took a magazine. Apparently flipping the pages was too loud and I scared off the birds. Well, guess what? I didn't want to shoot the birds. I wanted to scare them off. Okay. But a lot of the words that we use in real estate and real estate investing are very dude worthy words. We want to kill it. I don't want to kill anything. I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want any seller to feel like I'm stealing their house. I don't want any seller to feel like I killed it on that deal. No, I just want you to steadily do one deal a month. You do one deal and make $10,000. That's an extra $120,000 a year, a year with just one deal. Most ladies that I know, if they added $120,000 to their salary every year, that would change their entire life. And it's just one deal a month. You don't have to kill it. You don't have to mass market. You don't have to have 15 closings a month agents you don't have to have 15 closings a month you don't have to chase the clear to close anymore all right you can enjoy your weekends again you can take off on fridays you ever thought about that i'll tell y'all the main reason i started real estate investing i was working for my mom at her dump truck company and she wanted me to work on Friday afternoons. I mean, that's just unreasonable. Nobody should be required to work on Fridays, but especially Friday afternoons. I mean, that's like prime time to hit the road, Jack. Get out of town, start the weekend, leave on Thursday. Nothing gets done on Friday, y'all. All right. A four day work week is all you need. You will get everything done by Thursday and not have to work on Friday. And that's what I love sharing with my girls because, like I said, they've been to other real estate people and they've got all these ideas and all these things that they think they need to do in their head. You just need to find one seller that you can help. And you need to actually help them because that seller will lead to the next seller and the next seller and the next seller. If you need a daily practice, your daily practice needs to be to fill out seller lead sheets and make offers. You need to be talking to sellers every single day. You need to be establishing relationships with sellers every single day. You need to be practicing making offers with sellers every single day. You need to be writing offers every single day with sellers. All right. This is my one pager that I give out in first sold on fast. This is the contract that we use to get our houses under contract. And then we transfer it over to a bigger contract that I don't think I have right here. I have a lease right here, but it's not a lease option. All right, but it only takes one deal. It only takes one piece of paper. You're only one phone call away from having that right seller on the line. You're only one appointment away. In the beginning, yes, I need you to go talk to five sellers, which is one a day. 
All right. A lot of ladies don't want to get into real estate investing because they're already working. They're already wifing. They're already momming. They're already running the Sunday school class. They're already taking care of their parents and they're just maxed out. They don't know how they could possibly fit another hour into their day. I get it, girls. Y'all are busy. I just want to help you stack some time so that you can enjoy some time. I ask all the girls when they sign up for FDDF Plus, can you give me 10 hours a week? I don't care if it's two hours during the week or if it's one hour during the week and nine on Saturday. I need you to find 10 hours a week because I need five seller lead sheets. All five of those need three offers. And after eight weeks, you're going to have a house under contract. You're going to have a deal. You should be looking at closing. Sheila, I mentioned earlier, she got a deal in six weeks and made $15,000. Like six weeks. One day she got a phone call. She met with the seller. They signed the contract. Six weeks later, not six months and not six years. Six weeks later, she got a check for $15,000. And you can do that too. Last week, Sheila got a check for $13,000. Ladies, you only have to do one deal a month. And you don't have to kill it. Doing one deal a month and adding $10,000 a month to your salary, it'll change your life. And the math just gets better from there. That's just if you do wholesale deals. If you do lease option deals, then you stack your passive income at the same time. At the exact same time. Okay, so <laughs> we're on a tangent there, Christy. Sorry. But the best daily habit for a wholesaler is talking to sellers and making offers. It's gotten hot in here. Oh, 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 stay on this page. I almost exited out of the video. Hold on, y'all. I gotta open this door. It's hot as blazing in here. So that's my bathroom. Now you can see the bathroom. But it's hot in here. I already had to put my hair up. All right. Tanya says, as an agent, do you add extra disclosures to ensure you're protected from a seller claiming they didn't realize what they were doing? Oh, Tanya, I'm reading on through this. You're in California and there's tons of disclosures. First of all, the golden rule in real estate was also the same golden rule that my mom taught me before I went to kindergarten and the truth always wins. You have to tell everybody that you're an agent. You have to disclose, 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 disclose your position in this deal. Now, I am in Tennessee. I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses in Tennessee, and I have a personal interest in disclosure from the state of Tennessee, and it's two pages. I just attach it to every deal that I do, and it says, hey, I have a license, and hey, I'm the owner, seller, or buyer, tenant in this deal. I also write it on my one pager see this is the one that I did earlier and it says owner agent personal interest and disclosure will be provided all right so everything says owner agent owner agent alert alert owner agent owner agent alert alert my website has it all over it my contract has it all over it the uh, full-blown contract has a whole section that says I'm an agent and then I still attach that personal interest and disclosure to the back of it. So three different ways, four different ways, including the website. I say I am an owner agent. Now there is a way that you can relay that message that doesn't come across as alert, alert, Warning, warning, this person has a license. Warning, warning. Okay, that's not what I want you to do because that's annoying. <laughs> that's not what I want you to do. But you can just throw it in the conversation and say, yeah, I got a license. I buy houses too. Yeah, I'm the landlord. I got a license. It's all good. And honestly, if you are worried about somebody saying that they didn't know, you're going to find people that say that. I don't know. 
I didn't know it. She didn't tell me it. But I fully believe that the truth always wins. And you can always only do the best that you can do at that time. And if you're working with people who need help, whether it's a seller or a buyer, they're more likely going to actually appreciate you helping them then they are going to be worried about how they can get back at you. All right. I like to help people that want to be helped. People that don't want to be helped are not my people. I tell women all the time that you should buy rental houses. You should get a portfolio. You should do some deals. You should make some extra money. And when women realize that they want my help, they send me a message and say, send me an invoice. Or they send me a message and they say, give me a checkout link. When women realize that they want my help, then I can help them. But I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I just put my offers out there. Just like when I was buying houses every other week, I just put my offers out there. And some sellers said yes and some sellers said no. And I always focus on the ones that say yes. And that's my philosophy in coaching as well. There's lots of different real estate coaches. I have things that I specialize in. They have things that they specialize in. Now, one thing that I can say is I coach full time. A lot of coaches coach in their spare time. They, they coach whenever they feel like it. They give you a little bit of effort and energy. I block off whole chunks of my day for coaching so that I'm there when I say I'm going to be there. I'm there as long as I say I'm going to be there. And the people who have paid me and want my help, they always know how to get a hold of me. I hear other coaches where you get an 800 number. You may or may not talk to the actual person. You may or may not talk to somebody who actually knows how to spell real estate sometimes. You talk to somebody that may or may not have ever done a deal. And that's not me. All right. And I'm, I'm not the coach for everybody, but anybody that realizes they want my help, I am their coach. And I'm going to be the number one ladies real estate investing coach by the end of next year. Because I'm doing it on purpose. Because I have a passion to help women realize that they need to get their first deal done fast so they can get their third and 18th deal done fast. You always want to work with people who want your help. If you're working with people who don't want your help, you're working with people that are ready to, you know, send you to the commission, you're working with people that got a chip on their shoulder, that's annoying. Nobody wants to work with somebody like that. So focus on finding people who want your help. If they want somebody else's help, tell them to go hire whoever else they want. But when they say they want your help, Tanya, when they say they want your help, then you will give them a class, first class representation. And that's all, that's the best you can do. If you've got certain disclosures from the state that they want you to use, use it. If you've got certain disclosures that your, um, your broker wants you to use, use it. If you've got certain disclosures your attorney wants you to use, use it. My Craigslist ads say private investor agent working on her own behalf. I put it out there for everybody. Everybody knows I got a license, but I don't work like a regular real estate agent. I am not chasing that clear to close. I ain't doing it. I'm working with sellers that need some help. I'm working with buyers that need a little bit of time. They need some help. It's not always unicorns and rainbows. But today I got a contract that'll give me $8,000 by Friday and another $800 a month. You only need one $10,000 deal a month to change your life. This one's an $8,000 deal. 
and it'll change my life. Sheila had a $13,000 deal, changed her life. Because they all stack up. And that's what I want for you. All right. Y'all let me know if you have any other questions. I'm so glad to see y'all today. Those are all the questions that we had. And Tanya, you also mentioned that your local RIA group would be a good place to learn about some disclosures. Totally true. I love real estate investor meetups, RIA, national RIA meetings. I'm going to my local RIA meeting next Tuesday. Last Thursday, I went to a dinner. And it was 20 real estate investors in one room having dinner. It wasn't even like an official meeting, meetup. The guy that was leading it just stood up and said, thanks for coming. Next month, we're going to be over here. Hope you had a great dinner. Have a nice life. I go to all sorts of landlord meetings, RIA meetings, real estate meetings, everything except agent meetings. I can't stand those. <laughs> Those people don't understand me <laughs> and I can't understand them. Why would you want to just get paid once? It doesn't make any sense. And it's pennies on the dollar. <sighs> agents, regular agents who haven't seen the light of day and want to be investors. <laughs> hey, Shelly, I missed you too. Mwah. All right. Well, those are all the questions that we had for this week. We'll be back next Tuesday, and I'll answer all of those questions then. In the meantime, remember, you're just one deal away. You are only one deal away. You are one phone call away. You're one deal away. You're one letter away. You're one deal away. And if you want to get your first deal done fast, let me know. Bye, ladies. Great to see y'all today. Mwah.